Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah. Uh, today I'm discussing about the fifth P of our framework on being achievers in life that is productivity. That means an ummah that is productive, the individual Muslims that are productive, the transforming generation that is productive. And in my previous video I have told you about my travel to Japan and how I see this being implemented from a, for a country that has no resources to become uh, the largest among the largest economy in the world. So there we see the Japanese people, they are practicing many many things of Islam. That means in terms of productivity they are highly, the most highly productive people on earth. In terms of adab they are so respectful and so good. In terms of cleanliness they have the top notch cleanliness method of life. So basically, they are practicing many aspects of Islam. All right. So if I go to Japan, I can say that I see Islam, but they are not Muslims. I go to the Muslim countries, all right. I see Muslims, but they are not practicing Islam. So this is the uh, paradox of this Ummah today. But if we look at our history, remember our history is filled with great success, great inspiration for us to be able to understand how to become productive. For example, for the Sahab, for the our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahabas and Tabi'in and Tabi Tabi'in, within the 50 to 100 years, Islam transformed the whole landscape of civilization, the whole world. We brought in the productive approach of changing ourself, our nafs, which is very important. All right, our self towards self-improvement, towards bringing in. Uh, methods of agriculture, technology, sciences, philosophy, poetry, languages. All these were developed to the most complex level. And you can study so many of the material, for example, on syntax, on grammar, and so on. We developed the whole thing for the whole world today. We are, is the basis based on Islamic uh, scholars who spend their whole life, the whole life being productive. And they are from morning till night, from night till morning, improving themselves, improving themselves, and producing great works that today we see as legacy of the Ummah. But let it not be just legacy alone, because we have to replicate their productive life. Remember, a lot of our great scholars, Al Imam Shafi'i or Imam Ghazali, they do not have long life, but they are very productive. For example, my favorite Al Imam Al Hujatul Islam, Imam Al Ghazali, Imam Al Ghazali, Al Hujatullah. Rahimahullah, he is able to produce 200 books. Imagine, some of the books was written when he was on the camel. And it's such so fantastic. That means he's highly productive, highly able to focus and achieve the high level of productivity that we can today admire and say, wow, it's such a great thing, such a productive life, such a productive person. Today, if we ask any Muslim professors, with all the internet, with all the research material, with all the great libraries of all the world, have any of them, any one of us, produced 200 books? None. So it is a sad situation that we can only have reminiscence of our gl past glory, of being a productive ummah, a great ummah, a civilized ummah, a beautiful ummah, a clean ummah, ummah that brings permaculture to this world, of zoning, of taking care of the environment, of keeping the rivers clean. So many. Manuscripts relating to all these great things. Yet, today, we can only have reminiscence of those great days because, unfortunately, we have become a very passive and unproductive ummah. So, we have to change. All right? So, today, I'm just going to give you some ideas of my journey to Japan. Fortunately, I, I traveled to Japan and I studied under great masters in productivity, science of productivity, how to become productive. And we learn all about the Japanese culture. And one of the most important philosophical framework of the Japanese culture is Kaizen. Everything in Japan is always based on Kaizen. For example, even cleaning the toilet, they have Kaizen for cleaning the toilet. Imagine. Imagine if we implement Kaizen in cleaning the toilet, then our toilet will be as good as the toilets in Japan. You go to anywhere in Japan, the toilet is so clean that the tiles and everything is so clean is unimaginable. Uh, some people say you can even lick the tiles. It's so clean. That clean it is. And there'll be no germs there. You go to the factory floor. It's shining. The floors are shining. And they have their methods where you change your shoe, you have the factory shoe, and so on. So beautiful. 
So what imagine if we implement this Kaizen for our, all our mosques in the world? What is the situation of our, our toilets in the, uh, in the Muslim world? Is it good? Is it bad? It is horrible? What? So we have to question ourselves. Because if you go to Japan, and I have a Japanese friend, he says, if you want to get to know somebody, you go to somebody's house, or you go to somebody's restaurant, or somebody's factory, the first thing is you always go into the toilet. His advice to me, you go into the toilet. If you go to the toilet, in the toilet, and you see it's messy, dirty, uh, uncapped, then he is that same character. Messy, dirty, and uncapped. So don't be your partner, or don't get bis into business with him. So you see, they have this philosophy. Go to somebody's toilet and see their toilet first. Because if they cannot keep their toilet clean, that means they are not clean people. It's very sad. But what is the condition of the toilets in our mosque? Is it clean or dirty? It's a big question mark. As I say, I do not want to deprecate ourselves. But let us reflect how we are going to improve ourselves. Just this little aspect of the story of the toilet, eh, which I learned from my Japanese friend. And how everything that they do is systemized. Even drinking tea, they have a culture of drinking tea. So beautiful, the tea culture of Japan. You sit down, how they bow down, how they prepare the tea with all finesse, with beauty, with culture, with respect. Subhanallah. Such beautiful thing. All right? So I have that opportunity. And Alhamdulillah, if some of you have that opportunity, maybe this generation Japanese are no more as good as those days when I was there in the early 80s. But I saw those beautiful people who have beautiful way of life, having a highly productive life, which can help us change. So one of the concepts that I learned is Kai Zen. Kai in Japan means change. Zen means good, change for good. But within the Japanese char character of Kai itself reflects about self change by sacrifice. That means self change by sacrifice, Zen, by continuously doing good or improving yourself. So this is continuous improvement uh, by doing good and making it better and better and better. So everything that we touch today is good, tomorrow we must make it better. The next day, better and better and better. So this whole continuous improvement philosophy is the basis of the Japanese lifestyle. It's the philosophy of the Japanese people and it's also the basis of the great success of the Japanese Industrial Revolution after the post World War II, Japan is completely obliterated, nothing left, but they rebuilt within 50 years to become uh, the, among the greatest economic power in the world. Beautiful, uh, very well planned and designed uh, places of work, factories, housing, temples even. If you go to the temples, how they arrange their shoes. You know, it's so wonderful. You see, if you go to the mosque, all our shoes are just flipped all around here. They arrange even, yeah, when they go into their temple, they even go before they step out, they make sure that the shoes are in line. And the next row is at the back, is also in line. And the next row, subhanallah. I have not seen a mosque of that, that, that nature yet, but I've seen this as a tourist. I see how they do it in a Japanese temple. You know? So this is where we have to infuse this idea of Kaizen as a philosophy of life. There's nothing wrong. We, ab we absorb uh, knowledge because Islam absorbed the knowledge of the Greek, absorbed absorb the knowledge of the Persian, absorbed the knowledge of the Chinese, the Indians. So I want to tell you that use this Kaizen philosophy because it's very simple. What does it mean? Through self-sacrifice, continuous improvement to do good. Change for good. And the change for good is continuous. So for example, if we have a graph here. The Kaizen graph is like this. This is improvement. This is improvement, level of improvement. And this is time. Okay, so the Japanese will do Kaizen, small steps, because Kaizen also mean continuous improvement, step by step. Okay, so they do step by step. Alright, so step by step. So there's not straight step by step. So they do one step here, 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 one step here. Sometimes it goes faster, sometimes it goes down a bit. So they have a continuous improvement step by step with a mechanism for reflection. Muhasabah. All the time they go, they are muhasabah. Then, if they have this opportunity to apply new technology, they apply. This is where they go up fast. Okay, so this is technology. 
this is Kaizen so and then after they have acquired a new technology this is for their production level they again do Kaizen okay and then again they apply again this whole concept of continuous improvement so you can see this is again used technology all right so when they have this philosophical framework it is consonant with Islam because what does what is what that our great scholar says of being the Caliph of Allah huh? as you find in our book positive Islamic psychology all right we have elaborated one whole chapter on being the Caliph of Allah please read and actually it is actually the practical implementation of Kaizen because in on being the Caliph of Allah we have to change ourselves first that means strive to make ourselves good strive to help others to make good and make this world good and you can see so if we strive to make ourselves good we, this is what we call continuity Kaizen then if we use we have the knowledge in terms of science technology artificial intelligence robotics whatever that we, we can apply in our knowledge then we use technology then we apply continuous improvement so and then we become better so the same thing our society can is actually by the definition of being the caliph of Allah we have only have to do three things in our life remember we have only do three things in life as a caliph of Allah Allah has appointed us as his caliph we must strive what to make ourselves good I repeat this many times help others to be good and make this world good which is actually Kaizen so we don't need to feel ashamed but we have to absorb a philosophy of a people who are highly successful from the aspect of their ability to have discipline to have continuous improvement to be productive in life because we have lost our zeal for that we have to bring that zeal so for you young generation transforming generation which i'm addressing to this transforming generation you young 700 young muslims all over the world learn the philosophy of kaizen all right apart from studying the history of our great scholars history of our civilization uh, which is filled with glory and productivity and high level of thinking and research and development we also must also look at the current situation this 21st century who are the leading nations and why they are leading the world and how we can replicate the good there are bad things in Japanese culture yes we, we can see there are bad things also but whatever good that we can take from the Japanese culture of Kai Zen we can then inshallah transform our ummah to become an ummah that is productive the transform generation that is productive that means they have a productive life at themselves their family their career contributing back to the ummah developing their businesses or developing their career to the highest level possible always striving remember the possibilities as or being the caliph of allah is achieving what you think is the impossible because with the grace of allah he has given us free will he has given us symbolic language he has given us knowledge which we do not know the limits of the seas of knowledge we do not know what is given to us but we know if we strive to be the best we ask Allah to, to for the best, we strive to do the best, we can achieve the best and become a highly productive ummah that will change the world in the 21st century towards a positive development. And this is our jihad of post-Islamic psychology to bring this message to the world, inshallah.